I'm curious about why shame uh, appears at, at many places in this story. Um, so when, when an artist approaches, a, meets a limit and is seeking a response that feels better, um, maybe it's a solution, maybe it's just whatever, an accomplishment of some sort, do they necessarily feel shame? Why, why, is, why the assumption that shame is there? Okay. So I'm going to give you an un Are you okay? Yeah, I just... You have some... <coughs> take I'm your trying time. not to cough into the... No, the, go ahead and cough. Yeah. Let's, let's let it happen. There we go. <laughs> I won't edit it out. <laughs> if you cough, I'll edit it out. But if I cough, <laughs> it's charming. <laughs> You feel okay today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about oh, you? Shame. <laughs> shame, 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 shame. What is shame? One night, I was in Ojai, California. A place I have been to numerous times. Numerous times. And I stayed at Krishnamurti's old house. Hmm they it's a kind of like bed and breakfast place that you can go rent a room you did too okay what room did you stay in oh i don't think i know it was in the uh it was the upper there was there was an upstairs and they all have stairs. names they all have names oh they probably do but uh you know i stayed in the david bohm room oh cool <laughs> so i as i, I have slept a, i have a feeling i have a feeling that you know, that, it's like George Washington slept here. I think yeah. Krishnamurti lived in a lot of different places. <laughs> Some of them he may actually have been to. <laughs> so, well, for me, it wasn't I was so in much one of them. <laughs> it was more like Scrooge. I was like Scrooge vis being visited by the ghosts of Christmas past and Christmas future and all of that. Mm. Right. Anyway, right. so it, in Ojai, since there's no big city, the night skies are very clear and it was a, it was in the, i think it was in um it was a very clear night and i went outside and i looked up a, there was a partial eclipse of the moon i said oh that's shame oh that's what he meant tompkins and Nathanson, a partial eclipse of the moon. Oh man, think about that for the moment. You, you're enjoying the light of the moon and then an eclipse comes along. Let's say you could watch it in real time, but it doesn't fully eclipse the moon so that you lose the light altogether. It's a part, you can still see the, the, the light but this dark shadow is coming across it. That shadow is shame. The light are your positive feelings, interest to, to excitement and enjoyment to joy. And something happens and this dark shadow comes on and says, hey, these positive feelings are being limited by this event. Pay attention. So shame does not mean, shame does not mean um, what, it what it frequently means in common parlance, as in, right. it, it it means you both. should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, it means both. It's both the biological event and the psychological meaning you make of it. I am describing the biological event understood it's a partial impediment to your positive feelings if if i wanted to kiss you and you turn away from me it could trigger shame if i wait if i had the sense that well maybe he'll come around that the the, the light of the positive feelings are still there i won't 
that's one thing. But if I say, well, he's he was rejecting me forever. If I lose the light completely, it's a full eclipse. I'm going to go to more toxic feelings. So shame is overrated as a toxic feeling. Mm -hmm. It's mistaken for other feelings that are mm -hmm. much more toxic, like rage, fear, and disgust, for example. And I have found that in the creative process, being able to stay in the light of this event of the eclipse of your positive feelings, especially interest, leads you to extend your presence further. If you go to protecting me, the self-image, you lose that, that opportunity. 